<laughs> but so what about if somebody like in my case, right? So um, let's just say that somebody, you know, they cut out oxalates, they get terrible dumping. Um, I know with myself, I was trying to find the least harmful oxalate food to, to reintroduce. Mm -hmm. um, and I played around a little bit. I played around a little bit with like sweet potato, um, carrots, but I found one that, that didn't seem to affect me too negatively was green tea. Um, I don't know if that's one that you recommend. I was having like a cup of green tea a, a day, sometimes two a day in the beginning there. Um, but what do you recommend if somebody's like going through terrible dumping, are there any specific foods that you recommend or maybe as like the least toxic for somebody that has leaky gut and SIBO and candida? I do like tea. I do think I'm allergic to tea. I wouldn't touch it myself. And if you have a tea allergy, I wouldn't do tea, but tea doesn't add in other fiber, like, especially for someone who's been carnivore and their microbiome is kind of slanted towards less fiber and less plant stuff. It's good to start with tea. And usually I say do black tea, maybe do two tea bags together and do a strong cup of tea. Cause you can't get more oxalate and more caffeine and stuff out. It's like, there's so much in, in how much tea you have. So green tea, they use less tea in the tea bag because it's a more bitter tea. And so you get less oxalate. And if you're getting by with one green tea bag, that's great. But if it doesn't work, you might need two green tea bags or you might need you know, more tea. Um, but I highly recommend using tea because so many people get instant symptom relief within an hour or less, 15 minutes even, of taking a cup of tea, they can start to feel less in a crisis because they'll get to a point where the situation feels like a crisis where they're really quite sick. Um, the other thing is to think you got to go alkalize right now too. So a lemon, or you can turn a lemon into an Alka-Seltzer goal by adding potassium bicarbonate or sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. So most people have access to lemons and baking soda as kind of like an emergency remedy. So you mix like a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a nice quarter cup of lemon juice, let them fizz, add a half cup of water, take that down. That may not be enough. You may need to do it again, you know, maybe in an hour, maybe 45 minutes and keep doing that until you can tell that's helping. But the tea is a great oxalate food to, to work with if you can handle tea. Um, other ones, I think you made good suggestions with carrots and sweet potato. It doesn't take much like Two and a half tablespoons of sweet potato is enough. That's, yeah. a, that's enough to prevent dumping. Yeah. But normally it's in that, that there, cause there's, there's a, a group of people who there's always extremes for everything. Right. And there's people that are micromanaging. You've got to get this amount. And then the next day, this amount I talked oh, to. Yeah. Them, right? That's this real good way to live. I, I can't yeah, say it's just like, it adds just so much create an eating disorder life. or just, you know, meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I talked to a guy when my sister was going through this, we talked to a, a functional doctor out in Arizona who, who was really great. And he said, Hey, you don't need to micromanage that. Just don't eat a lot and don't eat none, but try to eat just a little. And so we went with that and that, that's so far been enough to keep her from dumping. Like she can even do fasting. She did like five weeks of um, broth fasting other reasons for that, but she just kept in some oxalate every day. And that was enough seemingly to prevent the dumping. So. Yeah. And broth is an easy way to add oxalate, throw some carrots and celery in the broth where you're making it or whatever, and you yeah. can add oxalate. So, so I, I, I totally to agree with that theory. Like, you know, just be aware of the really worst ones and then don't micromanage your diet, especially in the beginning. It's only really more the carnivores who are now trying to add in a specific medical amount. Mm -hmm. um, that need to be really worrying about the data and counting and so on. And, and that's because if you take a little too much at one time, it's potentially a trigger dose. And if you're in the middle of a big spilling and your bloodstream is already high in oxalate and you add a little too much at that time, it does sometimes dysregulate the body's control of the process. And then you can get stuck in this constant clearing process and where your, your system can't turn it off again. So that's my caution about like, yeah, be casual. Like if there's a little carrot and celery in something, you can have a bite of that. Don't freak out. Don't be, get too hysterical about it. But when you're trying to sort of medicate a dumping situation, you do want to kind of be a little more precise. The rest of the time you can be pretty kind of back of the envelope kind of 
uh, just the process of like learning what's really low and high is confusing because the data on the internet is all wrong. Yeah. Even everybody's favorite list has got like 200 mistakes in it. It's very easy to enter mistakes into a database or a spreadsheet or whatever. And then, you know, a certain kind of false idea, like the idea that coffee has oxalate, it doesn't, but it's written in the titles of medical journals. So if you think you're checking wow. prime sources and you go look in the medical literature, you'll see that coffee and tea are high in oxalate, which they're not. I mean, tea is sort of, but not compared to spinach uh, and coffee, not at all. But the mistake comes from the researchers themselves. They're putting out bad data and thoughts themselves. In this case, they're, what's high in oxalate is the, the powdered instant coffee powder. So if you eat a whole cup of powder, which would be a most bizarre behavior, you will be a high oxalate food, but, but you use, you know, like not even a gram of oxal of powder to make a cup of coffee from instant, but that's the kind of mistakes that even researchers make. So just it's numbers and math seem to baffle people, including people with PhDs. 